it is a part of who we are as a people. And it's one of the gifts that the Most High gives us when we are filled with the Lord. When we look at the sermon, it is to make a distinction. We are to distinguish. You might not be there. We are to distinguish if it's hot or cold, if it's good or evil, if it's right or wrong. It's going to take us to be disciplined in order to sharpen that gift. Say discipline. Discipline. So I must be disciplined. And in this hour, discipline is going to be a major tool that's going to get us to this next level. So when we look at the sermon, we're able to make a distinction, um, um, to make a distinction, that's not distinct, but to distinguish. And it's vitally important because we live in a world where it's very loud. Everything is loud, everything is amplified. But we're spiritual beings. So we're spiritual. Touch your hands on your belly. Say, I am a spirit. And what is happening is we're being restored back to spirit because we've got this human side perfected. And when we came over on the um, transatlantic slave train, one of the, one of the horrible things that was taken away from us was our spirituality. We didn't know how to really serve the most high. We, we, we forgot our spiritual nature. But he's restoring that now. And to be restored in this hour is one of our greatest, um, it's a great opportunity to really know him in a new way. Earthquakes have been happening. So many. In a week's time. But it's kind of being pushed under the rug if you don't catch it on social media or a little bit on the news. It's only that much. But the earth is crying out right now. There is something happening. Turn to Matthew 16 verse 3. and the Sadducees came and testing him, asked him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be fall weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Notice something here. He called them hypocrites. He said, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. He said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. But he said something here, for no sign should be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. The Most High is talking to us spirit to spirit. Yeah. And in days ahead, we will need to 
hide this word in our hearts. In days ahead, we might not even have a Bible. We might not be able to look up. We might not have cell phones. We are in biblical history right now. Hebrew Israelites, now people know that we are the chosen people. That's a major sign of the end times. That Judah would arise. And the people that were hit as his chosen ones will now be in the forefront. The thing that is important is it's not church. Look at your name and say it's not church. Look at somebody else and say it's not about church right now. It's not about the hoop right now. It's not about right around right now. It's time to get settled. And if you are here tonight, you are here on purpose. Only generals come here and we raise up generals. The Most High has marked you for such a time as this. And when we look at discernment, it's going to be very important. It's going to be key. It's a key weapon. Because we need to know what he's speaking. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of everything that's going on in this world system, we need to know when he is talking and what he is saying. We don't want to be forever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth. We have to unravel the religious snake. That we come and we get hyped up and we get a, a you know a great big yes and then we leave with nothing. But yet everything is going on and we are unaware. The most high said there will be a remnant. Yeah. That's not good. When there's a church on every corner, everybody do their service and they go to church. How is it a remnant? And in the remnant, there's a remnant. So we have to make a decision to stay on the narrow path. Because we're in a, an apostle is going to say something about this. We're in a time where good is evil. And evil is good. And guess what? Good people are receiving the evil. I was at a, a birthday party, and the lady sat next to me, and she was saying, I hadn't seen this, this Beyonce um, deal. Uh, she was on the side. And boy, they were just watching and looking and going on. They had a problem with any of that. But, because I was watching, I'm like, I haven't seen her in a while, and just, you know, all what was going on in the bands and all of that kind of stuff. I'm like, whoa, you know, things are different these days. But in it, she said, huh, you see him? And she began to talk about things that are against the most high. And she said, you know, times have changed. Remember when we were coming up, these things were not acceptable. But now it's okay, you know, you just, because they're still good people. Turn out Isaiah 5, verse 20. We got to be able to know the difference. You there? Woe to those, let's read together. Woe to those who what? Call evil what? Good. And what? Good. Evil. 
Keep reading. Who put darkness. darkness for what? Light. And light for what? Darkness. Who put bitter. bitter for what? Sweet. And sweet for bitter. Do y'all see that? We have entered into that time. And if we're not careful, that which is bitter, we'll call it sweet. And that which is sweet, we'll call it bitter. We're in the end times. So it's going to cause us to, to make a shift in our mindset. It's going to cause us to see different and see beyond. It's going to cause us to see in the Ruach, see in the spirit. Right now, each one of us, there are some spirits that are not like the most high that's working behind the scenes in our lives. We have to have discernment to know what spirit we're dealing with. And most of the time, it's not one. It's always hanging out with some old folk. But we have to be strong enough and bold enough to say enough is enough. Because if the Most High is creating warriors that are skillful, it's going to take you to kill the demons at home first. He's not going to allow you to go into the war not prepared. Remember David killed the bear he wrestled with the bear and killed the lion when nobody knew him. We have to go ahead and kill the bear and the lion that's at the house. I heard Dr. Pastor Sherry said we got to get rid of that thing that is in us because in days ahead, and I can even say now, the enemy is coming after himself. So if we have something in us that is attracting him, we got to kill it by any means necessary. Because what happens is we wind up fooling ourselves. We should no longer want to hug with us. We played this thing called church for too long. Put your hands on your belly. You have to ask the most high, show me me. Yes. Yes. Show me me. Show me me. So when this is basic training right now, this, this right here is boot camp. So when we go out in the war, we are equipped and cannot find nothing in it. It's no playtime. That's why we gotta get control of our thinking. Put your hands on your own head. Your thoughts create. Your thoughts is actually, when they don't line up with the most high, it's an enemy. Your own mind, when the most high is trying to give you good, your own mind will tell you that's not. Your own mind will cause you, the most high say, no, go this way. Your own mind will have you to turn and go a different way. You have to make a decision that I'm going all the way with the most high. Yes. Come on, raise your hand. Say, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. By any means necessary, I'm committed to the end. We must be committed to the end because we have a corona, what is it? Corona virus, what is it called? Huh? Corona. When they first came on television, and I heard it in passing, because I do look at the news, because the news gives me an indication of what's going on, and it also lines up with scripture since we're in biblical history. So when I heard it, 
And it said, you know, a couple of folks had already died. And always we have to realize that if they say a couple, there is really more than that. Because we understand now we will no longer be hoodwinked by anything that's set up for us to hear and run with it. We're going to run everything through the Ruach. Yeah. We're going to run everything through the Spirit. And as I was hearing this, I said, wait a minute. I rewind, I said, what? I said, something is going on. Something is happening. And then the next day, where it's five by ten. And then the next day, it was 30. And then the next day, I said, oh, wait a minute. It's, it's doubling. Then it's called pestilence. He said, in the end times, there will be pestilence. And when they said it was coming here, I said it's already here. And the next couple of days it said it's here. Raise your hand. Say so we are ready people. We are strong. And the gates of hell won't be able to prevent. So what do we do? We gotta, we gotta start eating right. I put some out um, the other day. I posted, you know, they're saying he was mixed with, with, with pig and all that kind of stuff. They're doing stuff. We, if he said don't eat it, we, I love bacon. I stopped eating the pork chops, pork bones. Hog moths, chitlins, and I, I stopped eating that. A possum might not, but I stopped. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> no, seriously, he has backed all the way up. He backed up like two years ago. <laughs> Went to his, I said, does she cook like this all the time? He was like, yeah, this is New Year's. And she had pork bones, pig feet, pig ears, oh, hog mouth, chicken. And I was like, you eat this? <laughs> Greens, cornbread, go ahead on, get them hungry, eat on fast, y'all already know that. Look at him in Leviticus 11. 
The first thing the doctor, when you go to the doctor for certain things, he, the, you know, one of the things, they take you off of pork. They take you off of seafood. Shrimp. He tells us don't eat it. And anything coming out of China is suspect. Trying to kill us. For real. Yeah. And a lot of the vaccination got parts of pig in it. Your soap got pig in it. Your brushes got pig in it. Something's going on. And it's in the food. So we got to do it different. Oh, y'all got to do better than that. Y'all okay? Y'all, 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 y'all thinking tomorrow? I mean, come on. I got to see. Raise your hand. Say, Father. Father. Deliver me. Deliver me. That was the. Yeah, I didn't know. She said from shrimp. Okay, you can do it. You can, you can do it. So it's going to take discipline. We in boot camp. Say we in boot camp. Discipline is what we will need, and it's going to produce perseverance. When we operate in discipline, it causes us to put one foot in front of the other on purpose. It causes us to do it on purpose. As a matter of fact, it hurts. When you begin to unravel this religious snake, it's going to hurt. Because most people say, this is all I know. I've been in church all my life. This is all they taught me. How I know you telling the truth. I always say, go to the word for yourself. Say discipline. discipline. We discernment and discipline is going to work together. It's going to work hand in hand. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Y'all see that? Bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. Matthew 24, you read Apostle? Matthew 24. You there? Say, so I gotta do it different. Chapter 4. Matthew 24, verse 4. You ready? You there? And Yahushua answered and said to him, to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. That's number one. Raise your hand. We're coming to a time where we got to know what we know. And the only way we're going to know is through discernment. Through the Ruach. Through our spirit. If they stand in front of you, talking, talking, listen to what the Ruach is saying to you. Because it's a lot of stuff getting ready to come on television. It's a lot of stuff getting ready to be amplified. You got to know the difference. And even with the president, number 45 in there, it's a good example of calling good evil and evil good. And it's affecting all of us. But we're covered, so we're covered. covered. Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, 
and will do what? Deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to what? But the end is not yet. People thought we was going to war just a couple of weeks ago. But guess what? It's not over. It's not over. Listen. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Is that happening? And all of these, all these are the beginning of what? Sorrows. Birth pains. Yeah. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and betrayed. And will betray one another and will hate one another. Have we seen that? Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Is this where we are? Lawlessness. They even tell us we, we don't have to keep the laws. But in, in, in Jeremiah 31, he said he hid the laws in our hearts. So how can we get away from it? When I give a scripture, write it down because I want you to study it for yourself. It's written in our heart. So we can't get away from it. The laws is only a set of instructions. The do's and the don'ts. But even in what we call church, they say, now I'm saved by grace. We're not under the law. But he tells us to establish the law. In Matthew 5, 17, write it down. It says that Yahushua came to do one thing, to do what? Fulfill the law. He came to execute the law. He came to finalize the law. You hear the di different doctrines say, you, no, it, no, no, no. He didn't come to fulfill it. We got to know the word for ourselves. And hide that word in our heart. If we come into a time, good is going to be evil and evil is going to be good. I was asking the Father for the last four years, and I'm understanding more and more, why is one road narrow and the other world is so wide? And every day I understand more and more. Hearts are turned away from the Father. We become idols. Whatever our flesh wants to do is yes. We bow down to it. Whatever our mind says, we bow down to. But yet, the Most High, the Ruach, He's everywhere you go. He cannot be hidden. Nothing is hidden under the sun. He's in the back of the boot, in the corner of the door. And whatever you do, He is right there. That's my sin. He hates it because you have had to bypass him to do what you want to do. You, you put him on a ship. Say, big, <laughs> big man to do. Where's your hand? He's looking for people that hands are clean and hearts are pure. Open your mouth and say, I can do this. I can do this. Say, I can, I can do, this. do this. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, verse 13. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. 
guess what? It's already been preached all over. Someone reached out to us in Pakistan. They start posting, we want the class, we want the class, pastor. Sister, we want the class. Teach us, teach us, we want the class. And we was like, okay, okay, you know, yes. And they call and they, and they text in and on, on Facebook. We, got, we, we left here last night, um, 12 something, because after we got off the live, they called and said, we want you to teach us. I said, right now? <laughs> she said, sister, do whatever you have to do, and, and, and I'm going to go get the people. I said, give me 10 minutes. And we talked about, came out of the book of Acts. Look at your name. Say neighbor. neighbor. It's not just them. Not just Go ahead and point, point to them and say it's you too. <laughs> and they called early this morning. And they called a few. They are hungry. This gospel is going all over the world. It's already finished. So we have to make a decision to answer the call. Look at your name and say, Nathan, you can do this. You really can do this. You know what happens? Our minds say, well, you know, I mean, I got to change this, I got to change that, I got to change that. Change. You won't be able to rule in this era if you don't make a shift. And if any darkness is left in you, the enemy is, you're drawing the enemy to. Say discern. Discern. You might cut off some people. It's going to cause you to treat some things different. This is the Father. This is the Most High. This is who the Father sent. Now, in you right now, who is the Ruach? Is he, is he third place in your life? Fourth place in your life? Fifth place in your life? Where is he in your life? The Ruach, the Holy Spirit. Where is he in your life? Because see, I'm seeing it now. Because if he is in a second, well, third, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth place, so when he speaks, it does not take for eminence in you're not listening. But if he is up the totem pole, up the top, when he speaks, you're going to do it. Yeah. Let me say this again. We have to position him at a high level because 
for some reason we are positioning him at a low level. Oh, you know what? I got to go over here and, all, and, and then I'm going to do it in a minute. Oh, you know what? Tomorrow maybe I'm going to see if I can fit him in. And uh, You know what? Uh, it's just not that time yet again. No, we can't even have those thoughts no more. They're gone. What am I saying? The Father sent the Ruach to comfort us through whatever we're going through. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit testifies to everything here on the earth. Yeah. When life began for us in the garden, we have to understand this was begin, this was the beginning of evil versus good. Yeah. Yeah. Evil versus good. We were good. The evil was that which has separated ourselves, separated themselves away from us, and they have been separated, I say, for at least six generations. Evil was at the bottom, or good was still at the top. Isn't that what you just said? Well, something is something y'all don't know. The Garden of Eden was up on the mountain. The top of the mountain was the Garden of Eden. Below the, the Garden of Eden was the Cave of Treasures. The Most High took him out of the Garden, took him into the Cave of Treasures because that's the only place he could go to at that time because Adam tried to do a whole lot. In fact, he killed himself several times coming out of the Garden of Eden to go into the Cave of Treasures because he couldn't understand what day and night me. Day and night me. Evil versus good. When Cain killed his brother, he separated himself away from his parents and went down there, took his sister, and went down there and started multiplying at a rapid pace. Looked so good down there because they were doing trampolines and all of that, making great sounds and all that, but the people of good maintained their faith. This went on for generations. It went on through uh, Seth. It went on through uh, all the rest of them that died. I forgot how many. But when it got to Jared, it began to dissipate. These are key things. This was a fight then between man and the devil. Because at first it was good and evil. Now it's man and the devil. Then it's an eternal struggle, struggle, it's eternal, it's a struggle of human nature against sin. Yeah. Hear me. The most high told Adam, he said, Oh Adam, he said, because you have sinned, I have to go away, and when I go, I, you have to wait through your generations five and a half days. One day is like a thousand years with the most high. Right? Five thousand five hundred days. He say, you're gonna see me go up to Galgota to be killed for the ones that I have. I'm gonna take you to a scripture right quick. This is this is this is this is something. Turn, as he's finding the scripture, turn to John um, 16, and this is why we have to keep the Ruach in the number one position because it's his dispensation now. Everything is already finished, and the, the, the Holy Spirit is here to help us. The Holy Spirit is here to strengthen us. This, look what it says in um, chapter 16, um, verse, let's go to verse uh, 1. But now I go, I mean 5, now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper, who is the helper? The comforter. The comforter, the, the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach. Yes. 
um, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Who will send him? Yes, the Messiah is going to send the comforter. And when he has come, listen, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. So when we receive the Ruach, he convicts us of sin. That's why we have to stay close. That's why we have to stay into the place where the Most High calls. Yes. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judge. That's what discernment is. That means we have to judge. He said the ruler of this world is judge. That means we have to judge. You know what the world say? Don't judge. Don't judge me. Lie, lie, pants on fire. If you ask for um, a lemon and they give you a grapefruit, you just discern and distinguish between the two that they gave me the wrong stuff. We have to judge ourselves. We have to judge those who we're connected to. Say discernment. Sorry. Look, look what it says. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he's going to guide you to all truth. So the Ruach is going to do what? I can't hear you. If we become very sensitive in our spirit, he's going to guide us to all truth. Trust him. So we got to practice what we are preaching, practice this word so we can get familiar how he talks to us. Get familiar so when we go into different territories that we're not supposed to be in, we can sense it. So we have to. Yeah. We have to. He will guide you to all truth, and he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you what? Things to what? I didn't hear you. That's very important. Because we have the Ruach activated. Nothing will come upon you unaware. You're going to feel it here. You're going to feel it. Even, even with Kobe. Kobe Bryant, even with that, for two days I prayed and I was praying and I was praying. I felt something in the atmosphere and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. In the middle of night, prayed, prayed, and I asked the Father, please, I don't want to breathe. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, My bye, breathing bye. days, oh Father, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Father, you know, add life. You know, it just went on and on. He'll let you know. That which is to come. And guess what? He took the brunt of grieving from me. Because we all grew up with him. It's tragic. We don't know the depths of it. But it's horrible. Because we still have a heart. It's still horrible. And so, anyway, he'll let you know things that are to come. He will glorify me. Or he will take the, as a matter of fact, raise your hand. So you can become very, very sensitive. You got children, you know, just just grandkids, all of that. You wanna, you wanna, you want your, the, the ruach to let you know stuff. You need to know when a blessing is coming through. You need to know when the enemy is is is, is blocking your way. He's gonna let you know that. And so all, all things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he would take of mine and declare it to you. Okay, so, you know, so we see discernment to make a distinguish, right? Distinction. Make this distinction. Key weapon. Discipline. All of these things are in Judah. I want to read to you 2nd Ezra chapter 6. 
And I'm going I'm to stop at the part where the Most High is going, where the Rock is going. He said, And he said unto me, At the beginning of the circle of the earth, at the beginning, at the beginning, at the beginning of the circle of earth, before the portals of the world were in place, before the assembled winds blew, and before the, the, the rumbling of thunder sounded, and before the flashes of lightning shone, and before the foundation of paradise were laid, and before the beautiful flowers were seen, and before the powers of movement were established, and before the number of hosts of angels were gathered together, and before the heights of the air were lifted up, and before the measures of the firmament were named, before the footstool of Zion was established, and before the present years were reckoned, before the number, imagination of those who sinned were, were estranged, and those, and before those who stored up treasures of faith were sealed. He said, then I planned these things, and they were made through me and not through another. Through me and not through another. And said, so just as the end shall come through me and not through another. And I answered and said, what will be the dividing of the times? It's important. Right? Or when will be the end of the, of the first age and the beginning of the age that follows? Then he said, and he said unto me, from Abraham to Isaac, because from him born Jacob and Esau. Huh. For Jacob had held Esau's heel from the beginning. For Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the, be is the beginning of the age that follows. Why we are being, we're going to be under this test for faith. We're under a test for faith. Listen, this is serious. What serious we're talking about? All of us have been given a measure that which is on the inside of us. And we must be able to stand to the measure that's been given. You're going to be able to heal, deliver, deliver, set the captives free, and even raise the dead. You're going to have to prepare your mind, reset your mind, even over and over and over again. Because I, I had some funny thoughts in my head that I had a dream of. Here I'm sitting in a funeral home. And you go in this funeral home and you command that person who laying in that coffin to raise up. And everybody ran out. And once that person raised up, Pandemonium gonna jump off. We must be ready for that because the Most High is giving back. He said, "This is the time now that is going to be purification and uh, with fire and water." So we understand that fire and water is going to be what is it? Purification and what is that? Sank now. Purification and uh, cleansing, cleansing and purification. At the same time. Cleansing and purification. When you get ready to minister, it's going to be a point where you ministering that this earth realm haven't seen before yet. That's what's going on. That's why he's ordered us. And that's why these things are happening. Because this is a fight against good and evil. Well, he said, but Lord, I have chosen the seed. And I have set them aside. And that seed that I have chosen is Jacob. Yeah. And, I, and I have pointed him as my firstborn son. So he can keep the Sabbath. Learn what the angels is doing. And that the same angels who watches over me. Are going to watch over Jacob and his tribe. Yeah. And Lord, I have given them the power. That power that I have. That they will know that they're walking in this power. This is the time that we know that we've been raised up. If you're not raised up. But the people not teaching you in the right. And the way the most high is going, you got to go. This little boy is no more going to be church. No more religion. Religion is making it bad for who you are. Yeah. Now we can go through scripture and I can show you. Oh, you already went there. It says right here what she went in Jubilees. Jubilees 15. Thirty-seven. 
Look on page um, 303. Well, I would have started at 727. I know we'll have much time, but I'm going to read it real quick. And it says, it said, Jubilees, Jubilees 15, started 727. And it says, and it says, for the angels of the present and the angels of sanctification have been created from the day of creation. And before the angels, and before the angels of the present and the angels of sanctification, he has sanctified Israel, that they should be with him and his holy angels. That means the same angels who watches over the Most High watches over you. Then he goes forward and said, And do thou command the children of Israel to let them observe the sign of this covenant for their generations as an eternal ordinance. And they will not be rooted out of the land. Verse 29. For the command is ordained for a covenant that they should observe it, uh, for, so observe it for among all children of Israel. Now here it goes. Verse 30. For Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau the most high did not cause to approach him and he chose them not because they were the children they are the children of Abraham because he knew them but he had chosen Israel to be his people. And he, he, he sanctified it and gathered it from all the children of men for there were many nations and many people. What does that sound like? Many nations, many people. John 3.16 God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You understand? So here we go. He said many nations and many people and all are his and over all he had placed spirits in authority to lead them astray. Verse 32 But over Israel he did not appoint any angel or spirit for he alone is their ruler and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his angels and his spirits and at the hand of all his powers in order that he may preserve them and bless them that they may be healed and he may be there his form and forevermore. So now we understand we have been uncovered and we have been unlocked. Now nothing is hindering us from us rising up to the top. This is why we say when you come into a place where worship is, drop everything from outside. Every, any hindrance, everything that you got against your brother or your sister or anybody back there, drop everything. And that energy that you are putting to keep that up, give it to the most high. So you can be thrusted up into a place of authority. Because he said he had put us on a fast track. And that fast track that he had put us up on is not made by us. It's made by him. Yeah. Yes. We must understand this is that time. And then he said no matter what comes, we will be ready. Yeah. So we are the ready people. Yes. That's why he said, I'm saying Judah rise. Why? Because it's the power that he put in Judah way back. To be catapulted now. Yeah. That's who we are. And it's about to be seen. Yes. Yeah. It's about to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. You are going to be seen. Yeah. You're going to go places. You're going to touch people. You're going to believe. You're going to do a lot of crying. It's going to be some inward things. Remember, he said he made us after himself eternally. Yes. Amen. Eternally. Not outwardly. Here's something he told Thomas. Doubting Thomas, we call him. He, uh, Yahushua said, Doubting Thomas, he doubted all the time. He said this. This is the way he thought. I said this to a brother in California. He called me back the dead. He told me, man, look here. What you told me changed my life. And this is what he said. This is what that was written. Well, it was 114 sayings of Yahushua. That's he called Jesus. Jesus. 114 powerful sins. And this is the saying he said. If you think that the Most High made the body for the flesh, then it would become a wonder. But if you think that the Most High made the body for the spirit, then it would become a wonder of wonders. Could it be that we've been thinking all of this thing in the wrong way from the flesh? 
and not from the Spirit? Yeah. Well, what does Romans 8 say? What does Romans 8 say? Because it says in Romans 8 that the flesh knows nothing about the Spirit. It's the, enemy. the flesh knows nothing. So how we're seeing, we see it from a different perspective. Instead of looking at it from the bottom up, let's look at it from the top down. So you can get what he's telling you. So when he tells you, you ain't got to worry about putting a pen in it, you would just do it. All we have to do is obey. Yeah. Test it. Oh, this is another thing that, that, that we've been seeing to come across here. Take off the limits. Take off the limits. Oh, I heard something tell me that, man. I wouldn't go do that. I don't know who that is talking to me. That ain't crazy to tell me to go on over there and do that, that. No. You know why? You operate out of three things. The Hebrews. Ordained. Predestined. For a new. Ordained. Predestined. Yeah. For a new. Your life, everything has already been planned. So if you place things in your pathway, don't call it the devil. If he disturbed where you are, don't call it the devil. He's trying to get your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And we must realize because well, there is a devil. Yeah. Yeah. But we found out what his, what his mission is. It ain't to come against us. His mission is to come against those who don't care. Ooh. And the most high. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have to understand what our position is. I'm done. Those 114 sayings, that's in the Gospel of Thomas. Let us in, yeah. The Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas. You got it. Please print it off. The Gospel of Thomas. Um, when you get you get home, um, the Gospel is very, very good. It's 114 sayings of Yahushua. And um, it's, it's, it's great. Also, on Tuesday, um, next month, we'll start empowerment. Um, service on um, um, Tuesday nights after the line. We'll come together, but we're going to go through the book that was taken off of Adam and Eve. Mind you, we're, the, in Daniels it said that the end time knowledge would increase. And then there are books that were sealed that are now coming forth. And most of the books, <laughs> he said sealed, but they were actually taken away from us so we would not know our identity. So on Tuesday nights, um, please um, print out, and I probably need to, because it's, it's two of them or three, um, the book of Adam and Eve. It's two books. It's two books. So it's the um, book of Adam and Eve. There's a great one, awakening with those books. There's it a really gives, yeah, it yeah. gives you a deeper um, understanding of, of what happened and how the enemy does not back up. And how you have to use your authority. Come this Mrs. Prophet Dolores. Most, most high y'all, thank you for this night. Thank you for your Sabbath and embrace all that you're doing. Sam, we thank you that it all you made flesh within us and that it manifests in you now because the power now is. Okay. As you cover us with your blood, cover our leaders to cover us through the night now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Yeshua, it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. So be it. Be reminded about who you are and know that you're in the Sabbath. The Sabbath started at 6, 6 p.m. today and it ends at 6 p.m. tomorrow. The Sabbath begins at 6 p.m. It already began. At 6 p.m. So we're in the Sabbath right now. So by us being in the Sabbath, it will go throughout the night back into the morning. And the book of Adam and Eve is going to tell you why he made it right now. God is going to tell you why now. 
the reason, the reason why he did that is because when Adam came out of the garden, it was during the time of the evening. And then they went into this place called the Cave of Treasures, where there was total black. And he had to pray because he had not seen darkness before. And so he decided to stay praying all night long until the sun came out. And then when the sun came up, he was petrified of that because he'd never seen the sun rise. Okay, I'm just going to let it stay right there. So he told Adam, he said, oh, Adam, he said, you only have 12 hours in the night. And you only have 12 hours in the day. It's a lot of questions that people have that's in that book. So, we understand. There's some stuff in there like questionable, but it answers a lot of yes, questions. Yes, it answers a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So now, we, but you got the, that's the argument you got, you know, when you got the Sabbath, Sabbath is from dusk to dawn, you know, da, 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 da. No. How he created it is for 12 hours and 12 hours. Yeah. And so we say, <laughs> well, we are, in a, we are in a great time right that's now where things are coming. Trials and tribulations are going to come only to test you. You're in a testing mode, family. And we say peace and blessings unto you. Peace and blessings to you and your family. Yes. Peace and blessings to this knowledge that you're obtaining. Peace and blessings for the direction that the Most High is going to take you. Yeah. Peace and blessings for the place that He has brought you out of. Mm. We say peace and blessings that the greater is already here, that we are on a fast track. That everything that he has prepared for you is already here. Peace and blessing to your job, to the people around your job, to your household, to your children, to your husband, to your wife. Peace and blessings to that friend that you have that you're looking forward to. Peace and blessing for the waiting that you're waiting on him that he hasn't given you an answer yet. Wait, I say. Wait on the most high. Be of good courage. Peace and blessings be unto your mind as you reset it every time you get these revelations. Peace and blessings to be unto that which you have declared and decreed, and it shall be no otherwise. Yeah. Peace and blessings be unto your footsteps wherever they go. May it bring unto you in a place of righteousness. Peace and blessings to you that he's building you up in the ministry that you will begin to be and see who you are. To break you off and the need for you to know exactly which way that you're going. Yes. Peace and blessings that you're taking off every stipulation from the Ruach HaKadosh. Oh, yeah. Peace and blessings for you to see that there's no more ceilings and walls. Where you can go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Yeah. Be blessed, family. Yes. Know that the Most High have your back. There are angels waiting for your beck and call. You are above and not beneath. You are a lender and not a borrower. Yes. You are blessed in the city and in the field. Peace and blessings for grabbing hold to that which our forefathers have lost that you will speak out. Yes, Peace and blessings to the kingship yeah. that you have. The queenship, the royalty, and yeah. who you are. Yes. Your greater day starts now. Woo. Peace yeah. and blessing be yeah. unto you. And it shall not be otherwise. Yes. Know who your angels are. Know that they are there. Peace and blessing that no beguile may come out of your mouth. Family, we love y'all. And it shall not be otherwise. Woo. I just want to be obedient. Uh, um, as we were worshiping, uh, the Most High was just saying, He is shedding things. He was shedding things off of us. He showed me like a mudslide, and then He showed me the end of oh, 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 wax. Oh, 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 and like the fire took the wax, and it just melts it off. He said we're all on a journey. Took me to Matthew 25 with the 10 versions. Start with the foolish and find the wise. He sent me the wise versions in this season because we're on a journey. And he said, prepare and keep the oil lit because he's coming home to get his bride, I mean his church. Oh, hallelujah. Baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.